Hello, I'm Dr. Jonathan Bull, a research scientist and member of the steering committee of the Collaborative Library. And this is a lay summary of an article called The Association Between Persistent Cognitive Difficulties and Depression and Functional Outcomes in People with Major Depressive Disorder. It was published in December 2022 in the journal Psychological Medicine. So why was this piece of research done? Well, according to the authors, we don't know much about how well people can think um, and how long uh, such functional uh, difficulties may last uh, when someone is clinically depressed. And by how well they can think, we mean difficulty with organization, with concentration and forgetfulness and the impact it has on their, uh, on their lives. Uh, how well does their memory work? How fast can they think? How good is their attention? And could these added difficulties make them feel worse than they already do? Could it reduce their quality of life besides the depression itself? What did the researchers do in this article? They looked again at the results of a previous study, which they'd done on 623 people with major depressive disorder, or MDD. Um, or rather recurrent uh, major depressive disorder. It was an app-based study gathering data on their depression, cognitive function, uh, functional disability, which means uh, how their lives are affected by uh, their state of mind, and their self-esteem. Uh, and they followed them for two years, during which the subjects were self-reporting um, data in the app. And the question, the research question is, are persistent cognitive difficulties related to levels of depression and functional impairment during follow-up? So in this subsequent study, out of the 623 people, they took 508, of which 76%, or just over three quarters, were women, with an av and the, the, the population had an average age of 47. In brief, the answer to the question is yes. Uh, greater persistence, that is longer lasting cognitive difficulties, are associated with greater depression and functional impairment. They compared two groups, those with lower persistence of symptoms versus those with higher persistence. And they found that there was a significant difference between the two groups, that those with higher persistence of symptoms uh, had a uh, higher level of depression. To summarize these results, they're actually the same as the results of their previous study, but with the additional insight that cognitive difficulties are associated with functional difficulties. So to put that in simple language, functional difficulties means social difficulties, absenteeism at work, low quality of life, and a reduced chance of recovery from depression they're actually saying is that clinical depression is associated with other mental difficulties um, including difficulties with organization, concentration and forgetfulness and that those have an impact on their quality of life and on their ability to uh, carry on with normal work and social engagements. So this has an impact for uh, the patient. And what do I mean by impact? Well, according to the study, a minority, or 38% of psychiatrists, said that they used these other difficulties, uh, cognitive di difficulties, to monitor their patients with major depressive disorder. Uh, so that means that if they're not monitoring these other symptoms, then they could still be persisting even if the psychiatrist thinks that the patient is getting better. So that could lead to misinformed treatment decisions being made. All right, so that's a quick summary of why they did it, what they did, and what they found. Uh, now, going into some more details about the study itself, why did they do an app-based study? Uh, and by the way, the app is called Thinkit. Uh, so, according to the authors, uh, a laboratory setting, which is traditional for this kind of work, is a costly and not very natural uh, way of getting real-world results you get results in a clinical setting uh, that may not reflect the patient's real life. 
Um, furthermore, um, the laboratory is not a good place for, or it's not a practical place, I should say, for measuring persistent effects because the patient has to return again and again. All right, so that's a good reason for doing an app-based study because the patient can do it in their own time, in their own home, and they don't feel as much like um, they're in front of a doctor. Now, what are the downsides of uh, this kind of study? Well, self-reporting your own cognitive function can be biased towards uh, the optimistic, uh, which is an unrealistic result. Um, or it may tend towards the pessimistic. Um, but anyway, self-reported is always subject to a little bit of, uh, of, of error from personal judgment. Um, but this paper aims to also test um, objective measures through the app by getting the subjects to do various tests to um, measure their attention, their working memory, their mental processing speed, so how fast they can think, and also their attention switching. Um, so these are all uh, what we call measures of uh, cognitive function and can uh, uh, lead to uh, measurement of cognitive difficulties that the patients are suffering. And then of course they also measured the depression symptoms themselves uh, through a standard questionnaire. Um, then the functional difficulties, which is, uh, if you like, the impact on their everyday lives, um, that covered uh, that was covered by questions about uh, how well they're coping at work, um, um, time management, um, running their home, um, their the social leisure time, private leisure time, and personal and family relationships. Going into some more detail on the results, um, the, the one thing that was most associated with um, uh, worse functioning at work and in private leisure time was so-called attentional difficulties, that is how well they can pay attention to things without losing focus. Another result was that um, working memory difficulties, uh, in other words forgetfulness, was associated with uh, worse functioning in all areas of life uh, that were measured. And then a third result was that uh, mental processing speed and executive function, so you can think of this as how fast and, and effectively you're able to think, uh, was found to be um, associated with worse function in all areas of life as well. And so the authors concluded uh, from these results that uh, these are important things to capture with somebody uh, who has an MDD and the standard MDD questionnaires uh, are missing questions on cognitive difficulties um, and therefore uh, they're not getting the whole picture of the patient's mental well-being. So the authors conclude by recommending that more things should be measured when assessing patients with MDD to make sure that they are uh, being treated effectively. Finally, every good study should end with a note on uh, the limitations, which is how far you can take these conclusions and apply them in other settings. Uh, so they noted that there wasn't enough uh, good data completeness. So in other words, some people were not filling in everything uh, or may not have been fully engaged with the app. Um, and of course some people who are more engaged may have different symptoms to those who are less engaged so there could be some inherent bias that um, uh, weakens the result. Uh, then the other thing is we've, we've, they've, they've stated that there's association between uh, these cognitive difficulties and functional difficulties and depression. Uh, but this isn't a causal effect. They're not saying that depression causes other cognitive difficulties and that these cause functional difficulties in their life or the other way around. Um, in fact, uh, it's probably some kind of mixture of both directions. And the final limitation of the study is this is a fairly small group sizes. Uh, so there's a, a risk of not finding a so-called statistically significant result which means that there's a, 
uh, relatively low power to, uh, to make uh, wider conclusions. But all that said and done, this study fills a hole in the research literature and I think has uh, some merit to its conclusions. Thank you for listening.